Happy Sunday to you. It's Poe back again with episode two of Space News. This week we'll discuss multiple SpaceX stories, the first flight of the cutest little helicopter you've ever seen on another planet, an update on NASA's SLS, and stories from Amazon and Russia. Strap in and let's take off. Back on July 30th of last year, right when the pandemic was at its worst, there was a small glimmer of excitement for anyone who enjoys science. On this day, aboard a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket was NASA's 2020 mission. Included in this mission was the well-known and discussed Perseverance rover, as well as the lesser known by the broader public Ingenuity helicopter. The trip to Mars took almost seven months and touched down on the red planet February 18th of this year. Last Monday, the little helicopter that could made history with the first powered flight of a man-made vehicle on another planet. It went up, it hovered, it landed. All total, it was over in less than 40 seconds. If this happened in your backyard, it wouldn't have been that impressive. But when you consider how far the helicopter traveled inside the belly of Perseverance, how much planning went into this, and the engineering to make this possible on a planet with a very different makeup to Earth, I think it's pretty freaking sweet. The area on Mars where this amazing feat happened has now been dubbed Wright Brothers Field. It's a fitting name to commemorate the first flight of an aircraft. This will no doubt not be the last flight of Ingenuity, as I'm sure NASA has plans to fly this solar-powered drone all over the Red Planet. As a matter of fact, as I was writing the script for this video, they sent Ingenuity up for a second flight. This second flight was higher, longer, and involved horizontal movement. It's only going to get more exciting from here on out, folks can't wait to see more. In addition to the multiple flights of Ingenuity, maybe the more exciting news from Mars 2020 is that this week NASA confirmed it was able to make a small amount of breathable oxygen on Mars. This was made possible by a small shoebox sized instrument on board Perseverance known as MOXIE. MOXIE stands for Mars In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment. I think they took some liberties with the acronym on that one. According to CBS News, MOXIE was able to produce about 5 grams of oxygen, which is equivalent to roughly 10 minutes worth of breathable oxygen for an astronaut. Obviously, this experiment is crucial for future manned missions to Mars. It's not possible with our current technology to bring enough oxygen with us to Mars, so it's crucial that we are able to create our own while on the red planet. It's been said that every time a gram of breathable oxygen is made on Mars, Elon Musk gives a Tesla its wings. Or batteries. Or maybe that's not a thing at all. Mars 2020 isn't the only good news out of NASA this week. After multiple hot test fires of the SLS core stage at Stennis Space Center, it's now ready for transport to Florida. It'll be loaded onto a barge and shipped to Kennedy Space Center where it's expected to arrive next month. For those of you who don't know, SLS is NASA's gigantic new super heavy lift rocket that was supposed to be completed years ago and is massively over budget. Many critics have questioned why it even exists and why the project hasn't yet been canceled. You can hardly blame them with all of the project overruns it suffered and the fact that SpaceX seems to be a cheaper alternative solution. But what would be the fun in that? On this channel, we would just like to focus on the positive and stay as far away from politics as possible. We just want to see this massive behemoth fly, and with it arriving at Kennedy Space Center next month, we are that much closer to flight being a reality. NASA says it's still hopeful for a late 2021 launch of SLS, but if we're betting people over at Let's Get Techie, and we are, we're putting our money on a net 2022 launch. Get subscribed if you aren't already for follow-ups on the progress of SLS. Next is news from Jeff Bezos, and nope, not Jeff Bezos at all. He left Amazon, and this story is actually covering the non-use of Jeff's company Blue Origin. Amazon is planning to launch a mega constellation it calls Kuiper to low Earth orbit to provide internet services. Sound familiar? Unfortunately for Blue Origin and old Baby Steps Bezos, hit that like button if you get the reference, Kuiper will not be launching on one of their rockets. Kuiper will instead take to the skies initially via an Atlas V made by United Launch Alliance. Why, you ask, would Amazon not use Blue Origin when Bezos was CEO for so long at Amazon and Blue Origin is a Bezos company? Well, it's simply because Blue Origin doesn't yet have a rocket ready to fly that is capable of delivering the payload to low Earth orbit. 
In last week's episode, we discussed New Shepard's 15th mission and the fact that Blue Origin likes to take things slowly. Additionally, New Shepard isn't capable of carrying satellites. This duty will likely fall to Blue Origin's heavy lift rocket, New Glenn, which unfortunately is still in development. Blue Origin doesn't share quite as much information as a company like SpaceX and has a very different philosophy when it comes to building rockets. So we aren't quite sure when New Glenn is going to be operational. If New Shepard is any indication, we may be looking at 10 plus years. By that time, will Amazon even still be adding to Kuiper Constellation? Or will ULA and their Atlas V have already put all the assets into low Earth orbit? We'll just have to wait and see, I suppose. And speaking of United Launch Alliance, not only are they gearing up for future Amazon payloads, but they're also getting ready for super secret spy payloads as well. At least that's what we believe is on board for NROL-82. It seems the government did a bit better with this acronym as NROL stands for National Reconnaissance Office Launch. These are the folks that often send reconnaissance satellites into orbit as well as many other mysterious payloads that we don't have the clearance to know about. As of the writing of this script, NROL is scheduled to lift off April 26 at 1.46 p.m. PDT from Slick 6 at Vandenberg Air Force Base in sunny California. We wish them the best of luck because personally I want to know what's going on over in Russia. This week, Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov stated the International Space Station was a disaster waiting to happen due to its age and that Russia would be leaving the ISS by 2025 to build its own space station. According to the BBC, Borisov stated that they couldn't risk the lives of their cosmonauts. Later that same day, according to Science Magazine, Borisov switched course and stated a technical inspection is needed and then we can make a decision and inform our partners. Personally, I don't know enough about the current state of the ISS to say whether or not it's a disaster waiting to happen. Something tells me NASA probably isn't as big on risk-taking as they used to be back in the shuttle or Apollo era. I could be wrong, but my guess is NASA has probably already done technical inspections and will continue to do so through the life of the station. Some have speculated that Russia is unhappy about SpaceX coming to play in the delivery of astronauts to and from the ISS. After the end of the shuttle program in 2011, Russia's Roscosmos had a monopoly on ferry rides to and from the station, and they were able to charge handsomely for this, as there was no competition. The shuttle was the other courier, and it had been retired. Finally, in May of 2020, the first humans launched aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket bound for the ISS, and the commercial crew program was born. Personally, I have nothing against Russia's space program and very much love their Soyuz launch system. My only beef with Roscosmos is that I can't comment on their Instagram photos and ask them where to download those awesome pictures so I can use them for backgrounds. Not just because I don't speak Russian, but because for some reason commenting seems to be turned off for me. Maybe because I don't live in Russia? I wish if Russia wanted to build a new space station, it could be a joint venture with the United States and the rest of the players in the modern space race. I have no doubt that by pooling everyone's resources, they could come up with something much better than any one country or agency would be capable of on their own. But if they want to build their own, as always, we wish them the best of luck. This is the part of the video where I'd planned on giving you all an update on last week's news of SpaceX prepping to launch their Starship prototype serial number 15. As usual, since we're witnessing live testing, schedules can change and things can happen. So SN15 did not take to the skies this week. We'll certainly keep our eyes peeled for next week, though. I can, however, give you an update on last week's story of SpaceX sending four astronauts to the ISS on their Crew-2 mission. Crew-2 had a successful launch on Friday morning atop a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. This time they went with the name Endeavor for their Dragon spacecraft. With the launch being early on Friday morning, all of the folks on the eastern seaboard that have adult jobs and were actually awake at that hour got one heck of a show. My buddy Ben, who lives in North Carolina, was actually just beginning his work day when he spotted the second stage of Falcon 9 hurling Dragon across the morning sky. He unfortunately was not up to date on space launch news as he hasn't been watching my channel, so it actually scared the shoops out of him. Serves him right for not watching. At least he's subscribed like I hope all of you are. By the time you're watching this video, Dragon Endeavor will have successfully docked with the ISS and the astronauts will have settled in nicely to their new zero-g environment. 
In case you're still with me, at the end of this one, you'll notice this week's episode was at least twice the length of last week's. Let me know your thoughts. Was the episode too long? Did you enjoy the longer episode with more glorious space launch news? Blast off in the comments below. That's going to do it for this one. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this video, and consider getting subscribed if you aren't already so you don't get the poop scared out of you like Ben did. I appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.